Hello, welcome to Access, I'm Nathan and this is a video about the excellent new PS5 exclusive Returnal and a few things that might have made my passage into the game a little bit smoother. If you don't know, Returnal is a mysterious sci-fi thriller from Housemark about an astro scout who crash lands on an alien planet on the trail of an emergency signal, only to find the remains of an alien civilization, a planet full of things trying to kill her and that she can no longer die. Or rather she can, but she wakes right back up again. Of course I love Returnal, it blends arcade shooters like Resogun with new weird psychological horror, echoes of Greek myth and really pretty bullets. We'll have no spoilers here, the following are hints designed to help you orient yourself in a game which has blown me and the rest of the Access team away. Let's start with something top level. Number 1. The world of Returnal breaks down into things which are persistent and things which are not. One of the core mechanics of the game is the death cycle. Celine will explore, fight and die, and when she does, you reset to her initial crash site and start all over again. Well, nearly from scratch. Most of the things you gather, weapons, equipment, currency, will disappear when you die, but some of them won't, and they are key to getting further in the game. And that relates directly to my next point, which is that there are two basic ways to make progress in Returnal. This is important to bear in mind because if you reset every time you die, how do you know when you're getting anywhere? As a player, what are you aiming for in any given play session? And the first answer is those items which persist between cycles and are unlocked at certain points in the game. These things come in various forms. Most obviously, there is equipment that gives Selene new abilities, upgrades to use teleporters, melee attacks, the grappling hook, and there are pathways which open up when you defeat bosses. You also permanently unlock traits on weapons by using them, making you incrementally more powerful with each run. These things stay with Selene forever, and unlocking them feels like a big deal earning something, taking a step in Returnal's shifting labyrinth. The second answer is, and let's call this number three, the progress that happens to you, the player. You will learn about the world of Atropos, about the weapons you like, your favourite equipment pickups, what buffs are a must, about enemy firing patterns, the rhythm of Selene's dash and reload mechanics, and loads more. You, the human Returnal player, will level up. It took me several hours to work through the game's opening area for the first time, wide-eyed and with lots of dying, then it took me one smooth 45-minute run to reach and beat the boss the next time I started the game from scratch. For number four, let's get specific. There are two types of currency in Returnal, Obelite and Ether. Obelite disappears with each cycle and that means it's important to use it. You literally can't take it with you. In any kind of game you care to mention, I am a terrible hoarder of currency and items, but this is Returnal's way of encouraging you to spend. Experiment, try things, use stuff, find what works, or just have fun seeing what's what. Don't wait for the perfect time. The perfect time is before you're dead. On the other hand, there's Ether. Ether is persistent and can be stored like a savings account between cycles. This is maybe the simplest form of progress you can make in the game. It's a lovely ray of hope if everything else feels tough, and it can actually help too. If you're struggling, you can stock up on Ether to a maximum of 30 and then splurge it all on a single run to give you a better chance of progressing. Number five, related to this, let's talk about the stuff you can buy. At certain points in the game, you'll come across fabricators where you can spend currency for items. It's a bit like the shop in Spelunky, but in space and less friendly. These items fall into two broad categories. Consumables, which slot into your HUD at the bottom left of the screen and are actively used during gameplay. Things like suit repairing health, powerful attacks or short ability bursts. And then there are artifacts, which offer passive buffs to abilities and stats. All of these things are lost when you die, so buying or finding these items is about building a loadout for that specific run. It's important to spend your currency, but also to make good shopping choices. It pays to experiment, to be flexible, and to know what you like and what works well together. 
Number six, speaking of loadouts, you can only carry one gun at a time, which has all sorts of implications. In a regular run, you will have the opportunity to swap weapons several times, but how do you make that decision? How do you know what's good? Partly, this will just be down to your preference. There are several types of base weapon in the game, starting with the basic pistol, tachymatic carbine, and the shotgun-like spitmore, and you'll naturally have a favorite but it'll also depend on the weapon's stats. As you gain weapon proficiency throughout a run, the level of the new weapons you find will increase. This means not only are new weapons likely to be more powerful than the one you're carrying, but each one is different too, with points randomly distributed across various attributes and with different alt fire modes. At the start of the game, this can feel a bit overwhelming, but the more you play, the more you'll get a feel for what you like, whether you prefer guns with bonus damage or a bigger clip, and what alt fire mode best suits you, and that'll give you a basis to make decisions. And it's also worth mentioning, sometimes that decision will be to stick with what you've got. It's not unusual to come across a better gun, but to stick with your existing weapon because it suits you or the situation better. Speaking of equipment, number seven, let's talk about parasites. These are strange, wriggly life forms that attach themselves to Selene and offer a wide range of buffs, but also come with a debuff. Whether or not you pick these up is therefore a tactical decision. Do you want the buff badly enough to put up with the debuff? My red line tends to be slower cooldown on my dash. No, thank you. Or perhaps you have another item which can counteract the debuff. As with everything, the trick is the more you know, the better the decisions you can make, and the better a one-off build you can pull together for your run. Parasites can be removed and also last for just one cycle. Number eight, speaking of buffs and debuffs, a similar mechanic is at work in the game's malignant items. These are specific objects, health items, keys or chests that will do their regular job of repairing your suit or handing over rewards, but will sometimes infect you with malignancy. This will cause your suit to malfunction in a specific random way, like a scrambled map or longer cooldowns, or like here, having enemies automatically counterfire every time you hit them. You can remove these debuffs with specific objectives. It creates a mini challenge within your run, or you can live with it. Again, it's about balancing your need for the item with the potential fallout. And that gets us to number nine, which is a general, almost philosophical point about how to approach the game. Returnal is in lots of ways all about risk and reward. It's written into the death reset mechanic and into various items and objects in the game. So my advice here is, be aware that this game is about taking risks, that the more time and effort you invest, the greater the potential reward, but also the more you have on the line. Appreciate that your approach will play a big part in what you get from the game. If you want to dash through, have a fight, sharpen your skills and not worry too much, that works and you won't lose anything. But to give yourself the best chance of a lengthy successful run that ends in progress, the stakes are high. You need to concentrate, to explore thoroughly, to gather resources, collect everything you can and find a powerful weapon. The very fact this takes longer means there's more to lose. That death when you've been playing carefully for an hour making a serious attempt at the boss hurts much more than the casual reset five minutes in. But don't be put off. You need to take risks and sometimes they won't come off. Number 10 related to this, the map of Returnal is procedurally generated. It shifts with every cycle, but it also always includes certain areas or certain types of areas. One of these is a kind of challenge room marked on the map with a symbol like this. These are optional. You don't need to go in here, and if you do go in, it's full of waves of challenging enemies. You might end up with depleted health or dead. Or, if you pull through, the bonus items you find will leave you better prepared for a long and successful run. Number 11, speaking of the map, there are also secret areas all over Atropos. Sometimes you'll find chests locked behind metal bars. Look for the shootable switch somewhere nearby. This is one of the first things the game shows you, which didn't stop me forgetting it until I was about 10 hours in. Other times you'll need equipment, the melee blade to break through walls like this, or the hook shot to reach ledges like this. When you're stocking up for a serious run, it pays to be thorough. 
Number 12, another good use of the map is to leave items you don't really need until you might need them. I'm thinking specifically if there's a large health item and you only have a little bit of damage. Wait until you have a few more scraps, then double back. The translocators make it quick and easy to get around. Similarly, in the past I've noted the position of a weapon that would be really good for the boss but isn't my preferred way to get to the boss. Backtracking for items can be really useful. And lastly for this list, number 13, another thing that's really useful in a game with permadeath is coming back to life when you're killed. There are a few items which will grant you another go at the point of death, read the description on everything you see and look out for tiny astronauts, and there are also these machines called reconstructors which cost 6 ether to use but checkpoint you, not the world, you at a specific point in time, very handy. And that's it for a quick look at 13 things we wish we'd known about Returnal before we played. And this is just to get you started. The game has depths and mysteries that we are still having lots of fun exploring. Like this video if you enjoyed it, let us know what you think of Returnal in the comments, it's great isn't it? And of course, subscribe to PlayStation Access for more like this. PlayStation.